Okay, Colvori, God of Kinship. Four mana, two generic mana, two green mana for Legendary God. Two power, four toughness. As long as you control three or more legendary creatures, Colvori gets plus four, plus two, and has Vigilance. Which that would make her a 6-6 six, six Vigilant creature. For one generic mana, one green mana, you can tap her. And look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a legendary creature card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So as the god of kinship, she has a specific tie to legendary creatures, making her more powerful if you have a whole family in play. And then her activated ability lets you find more legendary creature family members, I suppose. So uh, legendary creatures are a theme in this set, obviously, because all the gods are legendary. Um, the, the one thing is her front side works with legendary creatures, and then her back side... Did, did you ring the, read the Ring Heart Crest? No, I can. Uh, the Ring Heart Crest yeah. is a legendary artifact for one generic mana, one green mana. As it enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type, and then you can tap it to add one green mana, but you can only spend that mana to cast a creature spell of the chosen type or any legendary yeah. creature. So her um, her backside also works as a yes. tribal. Yeah, right. It works uh, with theme. legendary creatures or one specific creature type. And her front side doesn't mention... A specific creature type at all yeah. only legendary creatures well she's yeah which is a, a disconnect i feel like the front half yeah. it, if you want to play this as a two mana um mana rock and you you're playing a golem deck or whatever you can choose golem but then you have to have legendary golems if you want any of your other cards in your deck to match to to play well with the front half yeah. of her so this is one specific thing where, like, if you really want the Ring Heart Crest as a two mana mana accelerant, you're only going to be playing it with a single creature type, and unless they're legendary gods, they're not going to work well with. The it, first it's kind of the similar awkwardness that Burgie had, where they they added text to help make it broader, uh, but do, you know, doing that made the synergy with with the card itself uh, feel weird. Uh, but it, it it doesn't it doesn't hurt the card that it has that on there. It just doesn't feel like it. You're getting all the value out of that. <laughs> I feel like that fits in a little bit with what uh with Colvori's lore and story that's written mm -hmm. because um she's the god of kinship. She cares a lot about her her family members, the Scoti, the the gods. Mm -hmm. But then she's also just kind of into nature and and like goes on rants about nature. And it says she can discourse at great length about the drops of water on a spider web or her awe holding a newborn kitten. Um, she records all the stories and the sagas about the Scoti. Mm -hmm. Burgie kind of goes out and shares those stories, but she keeps the sagas of the stories about her her family's, uh, you know, accomplishments. But then she also, like, in her art, she has, like, a bunch of animals and mm -hmm. stuff where I guess she likes nature, but she doesn't really have anything that fits into, like, beasts and and animals of, the nat uh, of nature. But then her backside kind of wants you to build around a specific tribe, which I guess means your deck is built around the kinship of some yeah. tribe. But not necessarily a tribe that the front half. Can That's what I was gonna say. So her kinship is the kinship to other legendary creatures, um, other gods, perhaps. But her backside is the item, and and if you have that item, you can choose what your kinship aligns with. Yeah, which the front half doesn't give you any choice with that. They have to be right. legendary creatures. But that's because so that's, that's her. If you yeah. wanted... It, it It is fair that the front half doesn't care about any particular tribe as long as they're all legendary. So you can play all the legendary humans. Like like Dominaria had a strong legendary theme that didn't care about uh, humans, but it did care about legendary mm -hmm. creatures. So you wanted to play like the different members of the Weatherlight who, you know, one was a fungus and one was human there was a angel and and so on you could play all of them with colvori and you could use the green man on all of them because they're all legendary but it's the choose a creature type 
thing that I guess lets you splash something else to the deck and still use the mana from the ring heart crest. It's, it doesn't fix your mana. It's only ever green mana. Right. It's just kind of sticks out to me. Like uh, they wanted to make the card a little better, but then the, it, it introduces it. So now you can play it in a, in a certain tribe that you couldn't before, but then right. there's no match to the front side. Yeah. If you're playing the ring heart crest for your tribal deck, you're never going to play her as a four mana two, four, cause it's never going to be a six, six with vigilance. So obviously she's, I don't know if she's a mediator. Oh no, it literally says she acts as a mediator between her family members. Like when the, the Scotty get in fights and stuff. Um, and then she tries to please all of her family members to, to keep them all in line, I guess, or, or at least to keep them from going at each other's throats. Is there a kind of match for that in Norse mythology? Well, like with, a, I'm struck the God by... of gods almost. <laughs> with, there's, there's not a good direct comparison. What I've discovered is, so when you think of Norse gods, you think of Thor and Odin. And in that top tier, the very, very top tier, there's one goddess, Freya, who we named Friday after. So Friday is Freya's day. And Freya is so powerful and is surprisingly, uh, she's a very complex character. And to some extent, it looks like they've split her into two gods, Kolvari and Essica, and they kind of took different aspects of her, to and they they split them along lines that made sense. They wanted the kinship kind of is is important to to Norris as most um, people, you know, native tribes, and um, we'll get to uh, Essica later. It it seems like you know to some extent they. They picked her uh, some some things that kept a co more common theme because Freya was a little bit herself all over the place. She was a goddess of war and a goddess of 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 fertility and um, a huge number of, of things. And instead of keeping her that complex, they kind of simplified by splitting it into this, which is a easy enough concept to fit on a very green goddess, right? You know that whole nature. Thing, and they wanted to reinforce, I think, some of the legendary creature aspect. And so I think that that works pretty well, right? Was Freya a, a Valkyrie too, or associated with the Valkyries? Ah, yes. Mm. Uh, I wasn't going to bring that part up because okay. I didn't see it anywhere Kulvori with Kulvari. Neither Kulvori or Essica are really Valkyries either. There is a no. the leader of the Valkyries has a name similar to Freya. I can't think of what it is at the moment. Yeah. Right, so they split her into three, whereas they okay. demoted the because because. But um, Freya was a god. Odin, uh, sorry, yeah, Freya was a god, was a god or goddess, and and one of the, mo the most important one, probably the most important female goddess, way more important than than the wives of most of the other gods. They don't really talk about her husband, but she was very much a very powerful goddess, um, and in that sense, she the because the Valkyries didn't report to one god or goddess they when they chose the, the the dead some went to odin some went to freya and some went to hell and it's not that the, those that went to her were unworthy they but they very much reported to her at least as much as to odin and they in a sense the two of them fought over the bravest souls i, I guess but they didn't want to really mix that because that's not really well attested. You don't hear a lot about that uh, in in popular culture, so it's easy enough to 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 separate that from from her when they're going to split her into two anyway. So they, uh, I guess, three. Uh, th so this is all about family, uh, which is a perfectly. There are plenty of other mythoses that have a goddess of the family, of the hearth, of childcare, of of you know. And here it's a little broader, not just the tribe, but also animals and, and nature. So I think it it they they tried to keep it consistent on one powerful. Now, I, when you do have uh, they've got some nice you know legendary creature support this way. I'm not sure if they had that, and we're trying to figure out where to fit that in, and decided we'll we'll give it to the goddess, and we'll here's where we'll take piece bits and pieces that will work for it. They may have come at that direction. Yeah, it's um, they've had like legendary creature tribal. They they've had support for 
just playing a bunch of legendary creatures every so often they they have this as some kind of part you can you can build around dominari had a lot of it there was a random three color legendary creature from i think it was m20 that lets you play legendary creatures from your discard pile uh from your graveyard that kind of had some weird synergy with cards and in uh different formats at the time this at least is less extreme of a payoff you can use her just to draw cards you could use her just for mana Mm -hmm. and then sometimes she's a six six vigilant creature which isn't going to break any formats for four mana it's i I just don't really know where they're expecting this to fit into people's decks all too much because she kind of has a a weird swath of abilities there is a legendary creature theme in this set a, a little bit um She's really the only one that really ties it together that mechanically helps you uh, with your legendary creatures. Dominaria had historic, um, and then Kamigawa had various things. If you, you know, there's the legendary creature. If whenever you play a legend, um, you draw a card. Um, there's there's various things that work with legendary creatures in that set as well. Um, I can't think of anything else that specifically works with legendary creatures, but there's a lot of legendary creatures, so there is there is plenty to work with with her, I feel like. The other card on the slide is Vega the Watcher, the legendary creature Bird Spirit. It's a generic mana, a white mana, blue mana for a 2-2 flyer that whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, you draw a card. Um, Vega is on the slide with Kolvori because... Vega reports to Kolvori at whatever it watches. Ah, uh, okay. So I put it here with her. It doesn't really match any of the spirits. Of I, the I see, though, uh, her, <laughs> the art, the owl has uh, glowing eyes, and so does the bear and the wolf in Kolvori's artwork. Yeah, it, it almost, her artwork kind of stands in contrast to all of her abilities, because, like, her abilities want legendary creatures. But there's not legendary beasts so much in well, the set her, that she her, works with. Uh, well, Vega is a legendary creature, so maybe you can assume that um, the other the other ones have a reason to uh, be told in legends. We do have a legendary wolf in the set, but that is not Sarolf no, in no, her no. Yeah. artwork. There is a myth and a saga about a bear, but I don't think it's this bear. I don't think it's a real grizzly bear. I think it has more to do with the sure. uh, the changelings sure. than the bear so i don't know if maybe the card changed after it had uh after they made the artwork mm. for it i really don't know yeah what struck what strikes me is that she the the owl is ferreting out secrets and reporting them to her only the secrets of the past and future and, and as well um but it strikes me uh, very similar to odin's yeah. ravens who are out there finding secrets and whispering them and it occurs to me that when, when Alrund is flipped over to be Haka the Whispering Raven, he's a legendary creature now who re- is tribal to yeah. the goddess. Um, it's... Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought that was interesting, too, that Vega in the lore is tied to Kolvori and not Alrund. I know Alrund has his raven, so I guess he doesn't need owls, I guess. Um, but it was said that Vega... The owl reports to Kolvori and not anyone else. So I was wondering if owls and ravens are treated all that differently in Norse mythology, if that even comes up, the difference between them. Well, it, it did strike me when I was saying that there were aspects that they picked and chose so out of Freya. One of the, Freya's aspects is that she does have a cloak of feathers and she can transform into a bird, a, a, a flying creature. Um, that struck me right away. And but because I didn't see an obvious connection between her and Vega until you mentioned the story aspect, I didn't really bring that part up. Whereas the past, present, and future is a very different aspect. It's usually associated with the witches around the bubbling cauldron. You have three Norns or three fates, or the the you know fate and destiny is something very important to the Norse and the Greeks. And past, present, and future were three aspects of the. The maiden, the the maiden, the mother, and the crone, um, you know, that can see the past, the present, and the future. That's a very common theme that shows up in, uh, but I never saw it put to a flying creature that was reporting. 
Yeah, oh, Destiny Destiny is a green aspect in the color pie, um, which hmm. could be tied to Kalvori, but she doesn't have any mention of that. She's more aligned with kinship. And then Vega is white and blue. Doesn't really mention Destiny so much as just spying and keeping an eye on the past, present, and future. And this also says a spell other than your hand, which is all those exile yeah, it, cards. It ties with foretell are... is what Vega is supposed to be used with. Right, which is not Kolvari's. Um, no, like, not at all. Yeah. Not, so yeah, Ve- Vega mechanically has very little to do with Kolvari. It's just lore wise they're tied together. So I decided to put them together. What What do you guys think? Uh, is because we've had a lot of criticism of this card. Do you think it's a flavor fail? Do you Do you think it's a mechanical fail? Um, do you like the card? I think. So her story as the the mediator in her family, the fact that she cares so much about the other Scoti, it makes a lot more sense how she's written caring about legendary creatures. And in, and all the legendary creatures are gods, so there's no real reason to specify gods on the back where you get to choose a creature type. Right. So I actually don't really get the backside of her naming a creature type in her whole kit that yeah. she has. I like that she works with legendary creatures on a lot of different ways. She uh, gets powered up if you have a lot of them. She can get them from, out of your deck. She can add mana for them. I think all that's fine. I just don't know why you can choose a creature type on the backside yeah. of her. It doesn't fit in with almost anything else. To that, me, That's least. the biggest fail, but mechanically it's pretty much just a bonus. That's true. It doesn't make her card any worse. It just makes it a lot more unclear yeah. what they were going for with her with yeah. her design i agree and i don't think she shows up in any of the stories so i don't really know what mm-hmm. the ring heart crest is supposed to be i don't know if it's a symbol of the scoti that's what it seems to yeah. be like a family crest somehow or yeah heirloom. she doesn't have in her, her original artwork it doesn't look like unless that's around her neck very small it's possible because this type of the the artwork shows a pendant um, kind of it jewel does. that is for, one of the few things that shows up archaeological wise. They find these still. It's a it is a cloak clasp kind of of decoration um, uh, or part of belt uh, kind of thing. You know, it, there's all sorts of it's kind of a versatile mm-hmm. little thing. Um, so jewelry wise, it looks like something that would be Norse. Um, I don't think it's particularly important to the mythology, but in terms of culture, they have them. Yeah, it's called the Ringheart Crest, but it doesn't really strike me as a crest as much as a piece of jewelry that has a function. It, it's, well, crest it's, it's, does it's like connect a decorative, to family. Right, but but it doesn't look like a, a coat of arms or anything. It It doesn't really look like something that you would see and associate with a, a specific group. It just kind of looks... Like, you don't see the symbol anywhere else on the other cards. It's not, like, you know, on a flag anywhere. Mm-hmm. It's just on this one card, so it's really hard to see as a crest to I me. I see what you mean, yeah. It looks, now that I look closer, it is not a real ring. It can, It is what's, uh, there's a, another name for it. It's got that little gap at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Between the mm-hmm. two jewels. And that is... Uh, so I don't know why it's called ring heart unless it's intended to be heart is a kind of deer, you know, a, a stag. Um, and if that's intended to be antlers that come together in a big ring. I was almost going to say. She does mm, have. I, I was almost going to say it, it has three jewels like Vegas three eyes, except it almost looks like it has four jewels. So yeah. <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not they sure. They are different artists. Anything. No, it's the same artist for the for the goddess and the um, artifact. Uh, what is she holding in her hand in that picture? I think it's a bow. Yeah, it's, it's just like a, a fish. <laughs> is it okay? Oh, you know what? The crest <laughs> kind of does it, look like Vega's claw, though. Yeah, I, I I don't know how much real connection Vega has. How yeah to Kolvori outside of like this one line that he gets in his, <laughs> it, well the owl gets in the owl's yeah. bio so it could be something they completely came up with later that because like mechanically they don't match color wise they don't match um and the artwork doesn't really strike me as like Kolvari you don't see Vega in Kolvari's right. artwork and vice right. versa at all um so it would be cool if there was some kind of 
connection with with the Ringheart Crest's artwork in Vega, but I'm I'm not seeing anything like that. 